So as yesterday, uh, and with every other project, we're going to start with a new part. And this is basically a rectangular prism, a rectangular box that is 10 wide in the front and 5 tall and 4 deep. Um, the way I'm going to do this is going to start by creating a block that's simply that size and then carving out of it this sort of groove that's there. So I will start with a new sketch on the XY plane. And it's going to be 10 by 5. And it's going to be extruded 4 inches. So now I simply have a block that's the same size without anything cut out of it. Then in order to cut something out of it, I'm going to draw two triangles. So I'm going to draw a triangle on the front of the block that would represent the amount that's getting cut out here. And then a triangle on the back of the block that uh, is this shape. So this triangle, if you can picture how this line would go straight across if the block was complete, this triangle is going to be 8 wide at the top. Um, and then it's going to be one inch for the bottom. That's an isosceles triangle kind of turned up on its end. So I'm going to make a new sketch on the front here. I'm going to start by simply drawing the approximate shape of the triangle and not worrying about where the lines go. And then I'm going to add dimensions. So the um, top part here, so I'm going to have to select between these two points. Is eight. I'm not going to put a length on the sides because I don't know how long those sides are, but I do know that they are one inch from the bottom at the point. Then I also know that the sides are equal because it's an isosceles triangle, so I'm going to use the equal constraint. And finally, I have to simply place it where it goes left to right. I can see you can still slide it back left and right. So using the coincident constraint tool, which is this one right here, that allows me to lock two, thick, two points together in the same location. If I hover over the middle of my blue line, a green dot appears. And this green dot rep represents the center of this blue line. I'll click on that green dot. And if I hover over a little bit further, I can see the, another green dot, and that green dot represents the center of the yellow line that makes up the top of this shape. So when I use a coincident constraint between those two, it makes a, uh, it, it locks it in place. Now I'll finish that. I'm not going to use that sketch quite yet, though, because I need to have the sketch on the back side. So the sketch on the back side is another triangle, isosceles triangle, and it's four, four feet, four inches wide at the top. And it goes down two inches. So I'm just going to spin around to the back side of my shape here and make another sketch. Similar process, I'm going to make a triangle shape. Not really worrying about the exact dimensions to start because I'm going to add the dimensions. Between these two points at the base of the triangle, it's four inches. It's two inches down from the top, so I'll just set that right here. And these sides are equal. And then just like before, I'm going to use the coincident constraint and find the center of this triangle and the center of the back side and lock those into place. 
So now I have a triangle on the back and a triangle on the front. And I'm going to use a tool called loft. On the loft tool is hiding. The loft tool is hiding under the sweep command. So you have to click on this arrow underneath sweep and find loft. It's the second one down. Loft allows you to take two shapes and make an extrusion that transitions between those two shapes. I'm going to do a cut extrusion, which is the second kind down, just like in the regular extrusion panel. And then I'm going to choose this triangle in the front and this triangle in the back. And it'll give me a preview in red, showing it's going to take it away. That it's going to be cutting out that material between those two shapes. I go ahead and press OK. And I've now removed that V-shaped material between the two. So it matches my drawing. To start with this one, I'm going to make this first sketch on the XY plane in a new part. Coming across six. It's three tall on the side and I'm just going to put these two down and then add a dimension afterwards I'll make it five to the center here and I'll make these two sides equal and make these two sides equal as well I've got the side of the house done, and then I'll extrude it 8 inches, and I basically have the shape done without the front part. The way I'm going to do the front part is I'm going to draw this smaller pentagon for the front part on a work plane that's 2 inches from the side. So it's 4 by 3 and 5 in the middle. Uh, four in the middle. So I'll do a offset plane two inches away and a new sketch on that plane. Using some more equal constraints. Now what's possible to happen, like what's happening to mine, that the lines start to get a little bit of skew. So I can use some additional constraints to help line those up. The collinear constraint, which is the second kind of constraint right here, says two things share the same line. So if I do that one, I can do the green line that makes the bottom of this smaller pentagon and the yellow line that makes up the first shape. And then I need a dimension here for four inches. And then I also want to center this blue line along this yellow line. So I'll do the same thing before, a coincident constraint that finds the center of both points, or both lines, and that lines it up. Now I can do another extrusion. Um, I want to change the distance so it goes into the house here. But I don't want it to go too far. So when I do the, uh, the distance for the extrusion, I want to do it to the next thing it finds. So just do two next. And then it'll just extrude it until it runs into something and then stop. And then after I remove the work plane, or the visibility of the work plane, that piece is now complete. <laughs> I 
And you know what? I'm just looking at the drawing again. And I see I was a little bit in error. It's actually four and a half units to the tip in front here. So let me go back and adjust that. I can adjust that by finding the sketch I made, adjusting one dimension, and that will fix everything for me. That looks better. 